Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jasmine Tyler, and I love living a healthy and balanced lifestyle. It seems like every single influencer is in Paris right now, and I am jealous, so I am also gonna go to Paris. Except, I'm not gonna leave my kitchen in Mexico, and instead, I'm gonna romanticize my life and pretend I live in Paris for a week, and that means cooking lots of delicious French foods. I hope you enjoy this relaxing week in my life, get some easy and healthy recipes from it, and just spend a fun week with me. Make sure to subscribe because I post videos every Sunday and go grab a snack and enjoy the video. Bonjour! Aujourd'hui, je vais manger comme des Françaises. J'ai étudié les Français pendant six ans, mais je ne parle pas. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much all I know. I've studied French for six years, but I'm nowhere near fluent, so I'm gonna try to like interject some French flair into this video, but you know. So, anyway, I'm very jealous. It seems like every influencer is in Paris right now or somewhere gorgeous in France, and I have never been to Europe. However, I will be taking a trip this summer, so I'm so excited for that let me know your recommendations in the comments but you already heard the introduction i'm gonna be eating comme les Françaises. the first thing we got to do today of course is romanticize our lives and go to a bakery and pick up a fresh croissant and we're gonna make a delicious breakfast on y va I did not ask for a tour of the garden. Get the mates. The simple pleasure of going to a coffee shop in the morning, picking up a fresh croissant. So I got some ingredients to make breakfast. We've got this local organic ham, kind of like a prosciutto style. We've got these croissants. I had to stop myself from just eating these in the car because I want to make like a very extra breakfast sandwich for the family. And I got some pesto too. You know? Tomate? Uh, arugula. <gasps> I'll put these in the sandwich too. Fresh arugula. Tomatoes. In Spain, they do a lot of just like bread with tomato and olive oil salt, right? Mm -hmm. That's called pan con tomate. And then they have something called pinchos in Spain, which is like a piece of bread, like kind of like crunchy. And they add like stuff on top. So it's like mini toast. Like that's their style tapas in the north of Spain. Wait, mama, can you harvest some rosemary? I've never left the continents of North or South America, so it was so cool to pretend to live in Paris for a week because it honestly just opened up my mind to all the different cultures and flavors and foods that are out there. If you watch the YouTube videos that I post every Sunday, you would know that this summer, I am finally gonna realize my dreams of going to Europe. But I have a dilemma, so I'm debating between having my first stop be in Barcelona or Paris. I'm gonna be spending most of my trip in Italy, but I do have an extra week where I can either go to Spain or to France, and I don't know Know what to choose. If you've been to either of those places, please let me know whether you would choose to go to Barcelona or to Paris. <laughs> Ever since I watched Call Me By Your Name, I've needed to experience that European summer. I want to spend my days harvesting vegetables from a garden, eating fresh fruit, walking around these cities that have thousands of years of culture, and honestly just eating everything in sight. Also, harvesting my own veggies and herbs from my garden is such a vibe. It definitely makes me feel like I'm living in a French cottage, and here my brother was watching Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs as I cooked. What a vibe, you know? Go harvest me some rosemary, Seva. I cannot walk, mate. Do we have another poulet, mother? A what? I could have sworn that yeah, I got two. two. Plenty. Don't make it so, so pollo. You know, more like... I like pollo-y. I'll let you guys know more about my Europe plans in a different video because we got to talk about my itinerary for Italy, which is so overwhelming because there's so many places I want to visit. But you guys do have to help me decide what my first stop should be, either Paris or Barcelona, because I have to buy my tickets ASAP and start booking my Airbnbs. And also keep in mind that whatever you recommend, it's for someone that's going to be alone for a week because my family isn't going to meet up with me until a week after I arrive in Europe. So whatever city I choose, I got to be comfortable being there alone. Now let's focus on this beautiful Coco 
bon and of course we're gonna add our bon and we're gonna simmer that for about an hour. Here I am doing like an Italian hand gesture, but yeah, no, we're in Paris right now. I've been doing daily Duolingo for Italian and at this point I'm getting so confused between Italian and French. If any of you guys speak multiple languages, please give me some tips because for me, whenever I go to a different country, I feel like it's really respectful to try to learn at least a little bit of the local language. I think that learning the language lets you connect with the locals on a much deeper level and you just get to have a different experience, you know? There's so many nuances and magical experiences that you might miss out on if you hadn't just like learned a little bit of the language. Now let's take out the chicken and shred it before adding it back to the stew. Oh, that looks All really yum. It's bone in, so it's gonna be good broth. Anyways, continue. <laughs> As you know. So anyways, it was so fun to cook for Isa and my family again because I just love feeding people. It's so fun. And Isa actually just got back from a semester in Madrid because she did a study abroad thing. So we talked about all things Europe and it was such a vibe. I'm gonna pretend that this is basil. beverage i feel like in paris you're always going out to drink like it would be my dream to go to a random cafe and of course every single cafe has so much history like i imagine myself going to paris and like stumbling across a random cafe and i'm saying like oh yeah hemingway used to drink here so anyway beverages i feel like you always go out you go alone sit down at a little cafe you can bring a journal you can sketch if you know how to draw i personally hate drawing just because i'm bad at it it stresses me out i probably would love it if i was good at it but i would love to go to a cafe and just people watch and read and get work done. So anyway, we're gonna do a DIY cafe situation. I put on a white dress, hoping it would be like a whimsical, romantic looking Parisian dress, but it just looks like a clubbing dress. So let's ignore that. So I don't drink coffee, but I'm gonna make a matcha. But let's get a thumbnail while I'm here. I need to look whimsical. Paris. <laughs> and I'll like cut myself out and like put an Eiffel Tower in the background. <laughs> If you want to support authentic Japanese tea farmers because it's so important to preserve that tradition And if you want to enjoy the best matcha ever make sure to use my discount code jazz Tyler at checkout check out matcha.com You won't regret it I especially love this instant matcha because you can just throw it in a jar shake it up add your favorite toppings like almond milk or honey and then Enjoy it use my code jazz Tyler it is getting especially hot right now in Cabo and it's the type of day where I took a shower and got into my PJs at like 12 p.m. because I was so sweaty so sometimes I just want to lay around all day in my PJs. And right now we're going to make a niçoise salad. So niçoise salad is one of those French dishes that is so easy to make and it is also so balanced and nourishing. So I steamed some potatoes and then I added some green beans as well and once those were all soft I started making the salad. Traditionally niçoise salad has a very mustardy and vinegary vinaigrette so I added tons of olive oil because we love our healthy fats here and then we added some mustard but like the gross crusty part attached to the mustard like fell in that would have been so gross like i cringe thinking about eating that but anyway then i added some fresh garlic i added some lemon juice salt and pepper and then i hand massaged that because that's what makes it taste amazing then i added the cooked green beans and potatoes some canned tuna and some feta cheese on top which isn't traditional but i love my feta cheese on all my salads this salad is definitely not traditional in the slightest <laughs> yeah, we've got a bunch of goodies in here. I'm so excited. So good. I'm gonna go see if I can get into Stranger Things because the new season just came out. I've never watched a single episode. It's not that I think it's overhyped, but I just like tried to watch the first episode and I just didn't get into it. So we'll see if I can push through and actually watch it. So yeah. Hello, I'm back again. Potatoes. We are gonna make potatoes au gratin. Gratin? I've studied French for six years. You would think 
I would know how to pronounce things. If I want to learn the language, I'm just gonna have to go to France and just stay there for a couple months because I don't see another way that I can become fluent. You can only go so far in language classes, but you really just have to be in the country and speaking it. So I'm very jealous of all the influencers that are in Paris right now. You can use a mandolin for this, but I am terrified of mandolins because I'm afraid I'm gonna like slice my finger. So I'm just gonna cut them thinly with a knife. Also, I gave up on Stranger Things. I am so bad at watching shows. Whenever I see a show that has like more than like eight episodes per season, I just get so overwhelmed and I just refuse to watch it. Like it stresses me out to see like that many episodes and that many seasons. So this dish is gonna look very fancy and impressive, but it's really only five main ingredients. So you're gonna start by buttering a pan, then you're gonna layer on your thinly sliced potatoes and you're gonna pour on some milk or some cream. Next, you're gonna add any spices you want, like salt, pepper, some thyme, rosemary, and I actually added some sage, which tasted amazing. And then you're gonna layer on some butter. I am so gross and I did it with my hands, but you can just add melted butter. Then you're gonna add some cheese of your choice and start layering more potatoes on top. I ended up doing three layers of potatoes total. So it's the potato, the milk, the butter, and the cheese, and of course like salt, pepper, thyme, whatever you want. I'm cringing at how greasy my hands look, but whenever I cook, especially for my family when I don't have to be like hygienic or anything, I just cook with my hands. They don't care. It gives it a nice little flavor. Here's the last layer. I just added milk, salt, pepper, and the spices, but I didn't add any cheese because you're going to cover the potatoes and bake them for about 40 to 50 minutes until they're soft. Once the potatoes are soft enough to be poked with a fork, that's when you're going to add your cheese, and you're going to broil this for about 5 to 10 minutes or until it's nice and golden and brown on top and I also added some parmesan because we're extra. This is an amazing vegetarian dish and you can also make it vegan by using dairy-free milk and dairy-free cheese and just like layering the potatoes with a bunch of delicious spices and this turns out so good. It's so homey tasting. I feel like I could picture eating this at a French cottage and I ended up eating this with the salad which I forgot to film and I had like three slices of this delicious cheesy potato dish. Mangiamo. Uh, it's Italian. Papa movie? Yeah. Mamo? I should have added time, but they just couldn't mm -hmm. get me to. Like That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed spending a week with me in Paris, and I will see you next Sunday.